Born into slavery in Missouri, George Washington Carver was orphaned as an infant and raised by Moses and Susan Carver, the family who had owned his mother. As a frail child, he was not required to help with heavy farm chores and spent his days exploring nature and the plants at the Carver house. Soon, he became known as the plant doctor. George left the Carver home to pursue an education on his own. After two years, he earned a certificate of merit and would have to move again in order to continue learning. He moved 75 miles away to Fort Scott, Kansas. He worked at menial jobs while trying to save enough money for school, but his life was a lonely one filled with poverty, cruelty, and prejudice. When he witnessed a black man being lynched, he fled. He had been accepted to Highland College in Kansas, but on arrival, he was turned away because of his race. In 1886, he settled on a farm in Ness County, Kansas. While there, he performed agricultural experiments that would later be valuable to him. George was able to save enough money for a semester at Simpson College in Iowa to study art. Out of 300 attending, he was the only black student, and he was welcomed. He was described as having a burning zeal to know everything. His art teacher was so impressed with his ability with plants and encouraged him to major in horticulture. He transferred to Iowa State Agricultural College and graduated in 1894. In 1896, having received a master's, George was offered a position by respected educator Booker T. Washington of the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. At Tuskegee, George decided on his purpose in life. He was going to help a former slave population become self-sufficient through farming. Carver had been trained in Iowa in the natural sciences, in botany, and as a scientist and a investigator. Carver was a deeply practical man. He wanted to turn science into products that would benefit the black rural poor. He developed the Jessup Wagon, a movable laboratory on wheels to help educate farmers. He encouraged them to rotate their crops to conserve the nutrients in the soil and to give up soil depleting cotton crops. He persuaded the farmers to plant peanuts instead. In his Tuskegee lab, he developed over 300 uses for the peanut and 100 uses for the sweet potato. Anything from beverages to medicines to paints. Carver collaborated with Henry Ford in developing alternative fuels with soybeans. He also perfected a process for extracting rubber from the milk of the goldenrod plant. Carver produced a series of scientific uh, inventions that were primarily designed to enhance the economic and agricultural productivity of the Black Belt. They benefited black and white farmers alike. This prolific scientist was also a painter, a crocheter, and a musician, even raising money for the Tuskegee Institute by touring as a pianist. He had once turned down the opportunity to work with Thomas Edison because he believed he would do more good at Tuskegee. After World War I, by the 1920s, Carver had become something of a legend, a folk hero to the Black South. George Washington Carver died on January 5, 1943. He was buried at Tuskegee next to his friend Booker T. Washington. His tombstone reads, he could have added fortune to fame, but caring for neither, he found happiness and honor in being helpful to the world. George Washington Carver's greatest accomplishment was in being a role model to a generation of young African-American scientists who followed him. 